I want to talk to you about five ways your demons are hiding. Every day I deal with people whose demons are hiding. They may have a sin or shortcoming they can't overcome. For example, pornography plagues them. Blasphemous thoughts dart through their mind. Feelings of despair are so strong they momentarily consider suicide. These are a few examples. You get the idea. Otherwise, these people seem okay spiritually. They love God, they go to church regularly, and they read their Bibles, although with difficulty sometimes. Their lives aren't overwhelmed with evil, but niggling feelings of temptation persist. In the beginning, it's just irritating, but over time, the temptation or irritation gets worse, and nothing seems to help. Could it be that a demon is hiding? To most Christians, that idea is outrageous, even heretical. Their life seems okay in most areas, but over time the irritation turns to torment. By then, their Christian life and relationships begin to suffer. It's then they may sneak a peek on the internet by googling the word exorcism, and they find me or someone claiming to offer deliverance, and their journey starts. The process often leads to frustration, though, until they discover someone who is competent and experienced with such matters. Even though they are confused as to how something so evil like a demon could have remained hidden so long, well, here's how demons hide. Let me give you these five examples. First of all, personal pain, unprocessed trauma, unresolved abuse issues, and damaged upbringing can hide demons. Evil spirits thrive on human misery and look for emotional damage that hasn't healed. That's why our ministry offers inner emotional healing to wounded people. Number two, dissociated states of mind, multiple personalities, dissociated states of consciousness, alternate mental compartments disconnected from painful memories, those hide demons. And this is more common than most people think. I deal with it often. But ministry in this area of the mind requires experience and careful attention to psychological issues. Number three, unforgiveness or bitterness. Grudges long held, never dealt with, buried feelings of anger due to mistreatment, especially by a parent, that gives demons a hiding place. You can't avoid the consequences of Mark 11:26. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. The fourth way demons hide, unspoken thoughts of despair and hopelessness. Not everyone vocalizes their feelings of desperation. Some bury it deep inside thinking it will recede. It usually does, but sometimes instead it poisons the soul and it's fertile emotional territory for demons to camouflage their presence. And finally, number five, habits that are indulged in privately. If you have a secret, persistent, hidden sin that's not been confronted with confession and repentance, you may have an open door to demons. They'll hide there. Now, that's not to say that you could get a demon for every shortcoming in your life, but as Numbers 32, 23 warns, be sure your sin will find you out. Being tempted isn't the issue. Falling from grace isn't the problem. Demons will enter if you keep the door open to them by hiding your sin deliberately and refusing to confront it as a malignant evil in your life. Well, there are many other hiding places I might have mentioned, but this list will get you thinking about your own life. These are places where demons might hide. And just because you struggle with one or more of these issues doesn't mean your problem is demonic, but why not find out? Be careful who you consult. If you talk to a pastor who doesn't believe that Christians can have demons, you may not find an answer. It's like going to a doctor because of a stomach pain, and you get an appointment with, a, with an anesthesiologist instead of a gastrointestinal specialist. And make sure the person who helps you understands the full range of the deliverance process, which may include inner healing, dissociative identity disorder work, generational curse breaking, and the casting out of demons if necessary. It's been said that the devil's primary strategy is to convince most people that he doesn't exist, but he also uses stealth. If you're struggling with ungodly intrusive thoughts, hindrances to prayer and scripture reading, persistent evil images in your mind such as sexual lust or self-harming behavior, you may need Christian counseling, but don't dismiss the fact that you may also need an exorcism of demons that are hiding in plain sight. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. 
for the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.